It's a hardened facility. Anyway, uh, 912, that's what it means, is guys, it's concrete, okay? Uh, 912, let's go to the phones. There's Speaker Tina Mooney Barnes on the line joining the show. Good morning, Speaker. Papa Dave and Lamanna Speakers to you, uh, Sabrina and Chris. Papa Dave Guam, many of God's blessings. Oh, for you, all of you guys here today, and if uh, you allow me, I, I just want to share with you that um, I, I want to agree with your earlier comments that our frontliners deserve to be uh, compensated for all their hard work and their commitment to our community. And as um, we look at the original projections and that, and we look at our numbers or our cases today, uh, I have to say that our front liners are all working collectively and they played a key role to um, to make things happen. And I just want to say that uh, they deserve to be compensated. Uh, I, I know you guys know that this past weekend, uh, I, I did hear from a handful of our front liners uh, expressing uh, their frustration about the pay situation. And, and I want to share with you, too, that based on the research that uh, I have worked with my policy team on, uh, I'm going to continue to tell you with the briefings that we have weekly with the White House and my uh, calls to the National Conference of State Legislators, um, it is noted that um, the utilization of the CARES Act can be uh, used to uh, pay the frontliners uh, this uh, rightful compensation. And and I think I just want to um, also share uh, what I've said before to you and to other folks that I don't want to pit one against the other and to want to point out that uh, I've never been a lawyer and uh, I've always said that if you get lawyers in a room, you know, you can get different interpretations. But if the uh, attorney general's uh, statement says that the current law doesn't allow for us to pay for our frontliners, their rightful compensations, because they didn't meet some three criteria for double pay, I, I want to share to the both of you that we as an island are in a state of uh, an emergency and this emergency and no, nobody's ever planned for this to happen and and nobody ever wrote the law anticipating to respond to this kind of situation and as such uh, i want to share with the both of you that i did take the time to speak to um my colleague and his team and and look for a proposal that can address this and as in everything that i do Sometimes it's working with the community and working with the stakeholders who, who can see how uh, ideas and, and solutions can be facilitated too. So I want to share with you that I did have the opportunity to speak to uh, the representative from the uh, uh, Guam Federation of Teachers, Mr. Robert Koss. And uh, I want to say thank you to him for coming to the table and willing to work with myself and um Miss uh, Senator Pito uh, and his office to work on all the solution and and I must say uh, Bree and 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 Chris that uh, we did do a draft this weekend and um, this morning and Mr. Cross got back to my office and saying that uh, the union is um, very um, positive. And I, I would say, I guess, at least pleased on, on a proposal that, that we worked on. And I, I want to share with you that in a nutshell, this bill that's in draft form that's in front of me right now um, would uh, literally say that for every hour that an unclassified frontliner works during PCOR 1, which is between the dates of March 20th when the government of Guam was shut down to Mother's Day, that they will get one hour annually for every hour that they work. And these employees during the fiscal year can convert up to 100 hours for a lump sum payment and the remaining 120 hours can be cashed out as normal uh, upon separation. Uh, I also want to share to the both of you that when we 
that we also took the time to bounce this idea with a few uh, government of Guam employees and, and they had shared uh, some recommendations that I also uh, include uh, the unclassified uh, employees as well. And as, as much as I believe that everyone uh, should get what they deserve, uh, I looked over the veto message uh, for Bill 326 and, and I know that um, we cannot uh, simply afford that. And I understand that um, the governor can work on using the funds uh, for the CARES Act for this, but as case law has dictated, even during prior administrations, I want to say it was during the Camacho administration, uh, this branch unfortunately cannot mandate the use of the CARES Act. And, and uh, it's the governor's uh, position to utilize, to expend the funds uh, accordingly as as um, she seems uh, necessarily. And I, I really hope that the governor does uh, uh, take time to look at this and, and see what she can do. And, you know, I can only make recommendations, uh, Sabrina and Chris, but I, I just want to share that with this idea that um, it, is, it is a positive step moving forward. It's a way of stepping outside the box, getting creative, bringing in uh, the, the parties, bringing the, the idea and solution to help uh, those who frontliners who, who uh, definitely deserve this, but just seeing a way that we can help and make it a win-win for everybody. So um, that's one idea. Right. And then, of course, uh, you know that uh, I want to see we also introduced uh, Bill 327 uh, months ago, which would take, uh, again, that idea was to take the war claims reimbursement to allow for all the tax returns or to respond to the COVID-19 and um, media articles have stated that we should be getting the money in a couple of days. So that's $12 million, $12 million. $12 million. <laughs> but you know, uh, uh, it, uh, I want to say that with that, you know, there's pros and cons here. And, and again, I, I, as, as we look uh, forward in, in, in bringing uh, uh, the, these proposals and these legislations, we, again, we always got to look at the pros and cons to the issue. And for this matter, we use war claims. We can get reimbursed by FEMA, which can take up, um, you know, anywhere between a period of soon to two years. So if we use the CARES Act money, we don't get reimbursed but then we have that in the bank now you know mm -hmm. so i know it hasn't been an easy decision for uh magahaga but i know uh, essentially it comes down to fiscal policy and and we can make uh, dollars work if uh you know which is really uh scarce right now and we need to see how we can stretch as much as we possibly can but uh i know that um Hopefully, uh, our, uh, I can work closely with my colleagues and work out uh, some minor details and introduce uh, by today or the latest tomorrow uh, uh, morning um, these efforts, and I hope uh, everyone can support it. And I, I want to share with you that I will be talking to the rest of my colleagues about this issue and see how we can uh, facilitate this uh, move moving forward. Uh, I, I do know that we have session at the end of the month. I know that uh, core is up, but you know we need to move faster, uh, you know, uh, quicker than the opportunity for for holding emergency mm -hmm. session is also there. Uh, mm -hmm. We we've been really hard at work, uh, uh, um, Bree and 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 Chris, and and I, I just want to share with you that our work hasn't stopped here. I I also have. Uh, other bills that I've been working with my colleagues, uh, Senator Mary Torres and I had been working on uh, modernizing rules and regulations as it relates to the customs and quarantine. I know that um, their, their enabling legislation, uh, you know, was written in the 1940s and, and it wasn't enacted until the 1970. And we have been working closely with the Customs and Quarantines Office. I want to thank all the officers there and, and um, 
folks from Ike Pareto to uh, Ray Ray Bloss and uh, John Rick uh, Mendiola. And I just want to say that, you know, even working closely uh, with the Coast Guard, Senator Torres had asked me to uh, meet with the Coast Guard back in January and to push these efforts on how things come in and, and how we have to work through our borders. And I just want to say thank you for her invaluable knowledge at her time with the port and then her working closely with me and working closely with customs and, and our policy team so that we can uh, literally bring up to speed the, um, the uh, rules and regulations for customs. And they've been working on this for a long time. And we hope to get uh, an introduction of that uh, today also. Speaker, uh, can, that can doesn't stop there. Sorry. Can we go back to the uh, bill that you had in draft form that would uh, give the frontliners and essential workers uh, com compensatory annual leave, right, is what you're trying to do? Yes, annual right. leave. So, not, uh, not CTO, because CTO you have to use right away. Right, right, annual leave, annual. correct. So, yeah, um, so, Senator, in talking with uh, Robert Koss of the Guam Federation of Teachers, uh, would this bill stop their efforts with the lawsuit moving forward, or are they still doing the lawsuit and this is just a, a solution that you're working on? Or have we got to that part of the conversation you know, yet? You, you know, uh, uh, Chris, um, I can't answer that right now, but in my sincere efforts of working close to them and calling them in and working with my colleague uh, and, and bringing our policy team even over the weekend, I, I'm hoping that, that, that the community knows that it's a sincere effort. I called GFT in because I knew that as they continue to drive this, it's okay. How do we come up with a solution to, to, to help address these concerns, but more importantly, to see what we have? And, and again, in the attempt of, of sharing this sincerely, I, I, I must at least try. And, and I'm hoping that with the efforts moving forward and, and then working with my colleagues and, and sharing this draft with them and seeing how fast we can work with and seeing who's going to engage you know the magic number in the legislature is eight and i'm going to push to whip the eight and and work with my uh majority whip to see how we can facilitate this bill moving forward but again that is it, it was a solution it was an idea uh we brought some players in and i'm hoping that that the administration will engage with us i'm hoping that my colleagues will engage and i'm hoping that with the positive response that we heard this morning, you know, I know that that uh, decision came in at five o'clock, and, and when my staff called me, that that uh, GFT uh, uh, sent over the remarks. I said, "Good, let's 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 move forward." And and in that effort, uh, uh, Chris, uh, again, uh, this is what we're we're here to do: is to literally try and and think outside that box to be creative to find the solutions and then to show the community and to show the frontliners that we really do care and that we really are working on this and I, again it's going to take a concerted effort and for me I, I have to look at getting that magic number of eight on onto the floor but um, I also want to share with you that even with those efforts and, and looking at trying to protect uh, uh, our community and trying to look at as the governor continues to work with we are in PCOR 2 now but uh, look at, at opening it up and bringing our number one economic driver back to where it should be I know the timelines look very scary it, it people say it's going to take two years it's like what can we do to help protect Guam and help bring our tourists back and Senator Pito and I were working on a bill that would require testing at the airport. It's still being vetted uh, 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 right now, and this would hopefully end the need for the hundreds of rooms that our government is paying for daily. Uh, again, we are still working on some details, minor details, uh, to get that bill ready uh, today. And I just want to thank the chairman for public safety for this innovative approach, uh, given that our main industry is uh, tourism and every day we close you and I you folks know that we lose a lot of uh, our invaluable resources and we got 20,000 21,000 jobs plus that that have been bravely affected mm -hmm. and I need our our, our, our community notes to know that uh, I know that that industry wants to go back to work that they call us 
consistently. They call our office. And, um, but I need to know that we want to do something responsibly. So testing at the air, uh, airport might be one of that. We're still trying to look at the, uh, whether the constitutionality or working with the feds, if that's going to, to have any hiccups, but uh, it's something that we want to work to move forward and making sure that the protocols and the protections in place. So uh, again, working closely with the airport, trying to get their buy-in and seeing what we can do. That was something that we, we thought of too. And I just want to share with you, uh, uh, Bree and, and Chris, that that uh, we as policy uh, makers are, are still working in and uh, we uh, will come continue to look for solutions so even if we have to step outside the, the, the usual uh, parameters right. but uh, we, we need to work hard and I just want to know that uh, I must say that with the briefing and the information that we got last week uh, 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 you know, all my colleagues, the majority, if not all of them, were there listening, and and uh, I want to thank the senators, uh, Sabina Paris and Senator Luis Munya, for turning in their questions, their additional questions to the administration. Uh, it was in no way. How many to, questions did you get, Speaker? I think uh, we got. Uh, uh, let me double check, but I know. Because I know you said that you and uh, Senator Regine had like sixty-six or something like that. Well, you know what. Chris, that was for the, the, the joint uh, uh, region, the, the, the Guam build-up presentation. And, and in the efforts of doing a presentation and getting the information out and saving time, that format that I have utilized two times over, and this I think is possibly my third time, is to make sure that if there's any other question that is out there, including for my colleagues, that they bring it in, we send it out, we get it recorded, it gets put on the media, it, and and it, it's a chance to get ahead of everything, every question, and then it's recorded so that if anybody says, well, this wasn't done or that wasn't done, there is not just proof, but a, a better understanding and an outlet where people can go to and look at. And I must thank uh, the Committee on Rules for making the uh, legislative channel accessible to the community and bringing a lot of the information out and that is the necessary tool that i've been working with i also have a kiosk in my office as it relates to the guam buildup but for this the COVID 19 i i want to share with you that the other idea i have is to extend a program out there that if anybody has any question or concern or cannot or, or feel bad and, and cannot fill out a form call my office email my office I'm going to help walk it through. I had I had a, a, a family come up to me uh, via the telephone and email saying, please, can you call me? I'm embarrassed. I don't know how to work this. I have five children. What can I do? I haven't done A, B, C, D. I said, okay, help me help you. Give me all the documents you have, and I will help you facilitate it to the individual that needs to do the work for you so that you can be filed properly and then you can get the benefits because the governor did extend the stimulus package to June 12th. Right. Yeah. That individual was in tears and saying, why do you, why do you care? I said, you have five children. If, if not for you and your significant other, then think of your children. Mm -hmm. I got that information delivered to the, today by a relative, dropped at me. I just want to say I'm going to walk it through just just to see if I can help make that difference I'm going to do it and I again extend that information out if, if there's any questions I know I'm still getting questions on war claims uh, just sometimes uh, Bree and, and, and Chris is just somebody just needs to step up to the plate and say that okay if, 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 if you're not understanding and, and you feel more comfortable then I will open my door well, Speaker, well, thank you. we're so glad that you uh, shared your time. And remember, we do this weekly update uh, every week. You just yes. call in, let us know what you're working on, and it's uh, definitely a lot. So I appreciate you reaching out, Speaker. Thank you. Uh, have a good day. God bless you. God bless Guam. Okay. Wash your hands, Kay. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure Dal wash his hands. <laughs> God bless you, too. Okay. Right, take care. Take care. Take care. Uh, 931. Let's keep it on the phones here. We have Lynn. Lynn, are you there? 
Yes, sir. All right, so you had a question about uh, Revan Tax. Go for yes. it. What do you need to know? Okay, I what they asked to do. So I'm just trying to inquire, um, you know, um, is there any other way to contact them? Is there an, another way to contact them? Yes. What way are you trying? Yeah. I'm trying email. I'm trying 